Victoria 3 can be a very engaging game and if you play as the right nations you can really have a ton of fun. That's why today we are continuing our Super Germany campaign and we're doing the final bit of this run. Also want to give you guys a very big thank you for the support on the channel. It's been amazing seeing all the positive comments. I've been going through a little bit of a tough time uh, recently and just going through the comments and reading you know all the amazing support from you guys. It, it, it really means the world to me so thank you for that. Alright not gonna diddy daddle over over here and let's just carry on with the campaign shall we i'm gonna do my little overview on our entire situation as i've been doing in more recent videos because i've seen that you guys enjoy that so let's go ahead and uh recap everything that's going on we have uh, basically super germany we formed it pretty early on we've got a few extra puppets around like the swiss the danes we've got a few other nations in our customs union as well like the belgians the uh, swedes the norwegians and so on i haven't expanded within europe too much but i will start in this part of the campaign of course expanding through europe we do have a lot of uh colonies all around the world however most of saudi arabia or better yet the arabian peninsula is ours as is most of south africa madagascar zanzibar south america as well and now we're in the process of trying to get beijing from uh the uh, Qing. however i'm kind of struggling with it because i don't actually have enough uh ships to do a proper naval invasion so i might just cancel out this uh, war and attack somebody else Else closer to me because right now my infamy is 25 so I can actually attack quite a few other nations I'm even thinking of attacking the Russians and just grabbing lands into the east which I can use because they have a lot of population in these areas and my main focus is to increase the amount of population now look at this we have 87 million pops but we only have roughly 200,000 that we can still employ and we're pretty much using all of the most uh, up-to-date production methods so population really is our biggest issue alongside the fact that our private sector is screwing everything in our country so i'm really thinking to switch from less fair which i know is basically the best economic system uh, to something else maybe even cooperative ownership you know what i mean no i'm not gonna go commie don't worry i'm not gonna go commie it's all good i might do command economy because then we don't have a private sector at all and yes technically this is the commie <laughs> it's not the cooperative ownership but yeah i'll think about it i'll definitely think about it think about it very deeply in this run for sure politically speaking though we're pretty well off i want to change just migration control to uh no migration control so we can start getting uh migrants into our country and i'm also going to go from here to protect or better yet give compulsory primary primary education for kids so we can increase our education level institution wise we are level three still which is a little bit of an issue you know what i mean we need to increase that and we also need to increase our health care so we're going to need to build a lot more uh government administration buildings the rest of the legislation here is actually fairly good as far as i'm concern we're in the process of getting proportional taxation and that's going to bring us from the get-go 400,000 in uh, uh income which is a massive amount overall and it's about to pass we're in the voting phase so yeah let's see i know i could do a white piece i'll do one more naval invasion with the ching if it doesn't work i'll just attack somebody else and get population from another country it's not about the troop quality because we do have way better troops than the ching but it's about the fact that i just don't have enough ship and i have recruited more ships and i have more ships in the queue oh, actually the queue just finished that matter let's recruit more ships the problem still is however that um it's just not enough man i need a lot more that's the reality i need a proper fleet if i'm gonna go ahead and become a uh, global power right oh looks like we also just discovered oil in hanover that is pretty juicy my boys absolutely delicious you know actually going for the um super germany strat as prussia as we did in this run makes me wonder a little bit what if historically speaking austria or better yet austro-hungary or whatever also so merged with the prussians and actually formed super germany as we like to call it right what would the world be like if the entirety of central europe would have been one freaking nation that's pretty insane to just think about honestly i feel like that would be something that could even compete with the might of the united states in uh, modern times for that matter also to give an overview of the uh, ledger over here we have the highest standard of living in the world second after us is selnak which are not important population wise we are not the highest we're fourth but gdp wise we are way above everybody else our ally the brits are second coming in with 116 million gdp and then ching and east india company both of which we are at war with here are third and fourth so we're doing pretty good considering that the patch has nerfed a lot of things and i haven't really been super try harding this either also to point out the new patch is around the corner that's also why i'm uh, releasing this video because i want to release this before the new patch is out and i have to say that the new patch is pretty freaking good like actually 
pretty good. I didn't expect it to be that good, but I might actually redo my Germany run when uh, the new patch arrives because I'm curious to see how it fares. And I have a new strat for Germany where we could possibly form Super Germany in four or five years if we have a little bit of good RNG. So let me know in the comment section if you like to see that actually. All right, another naval invasion failed. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to go ahead and accept the white piece. It is what it is. We're going to we're going to take our war somewhere else and we're going to attack Qing once we have a province that we border them so we don't need to do any naval invasion, right? Hey, we just got proportional taxation. Hell yeah, my boys. Hell yeah. Okay, we're back on track then. We're absolutely back on track with our economy. And look at that. After on pausing and letting one week pass, we're up to eight. 100,000 income. That is redonkulous, my man. I need to start investing in some things in that case. We're also going to try and get compulsory primary school so we can uh, go up to level 5 with our education institution. That way, we're going to go up to 50% education access and 62% assimilation, which is a huge deal because we want to assimilate all the different peoples in our country. There's only one language we're going to be speaking here, and that language is Austrian. I mean, uh, German. German. And my biggest worry is the lack of rubber um, I need to start expanding more into the rubber producing areas of the world. So I think it's time we expand into South America a tiny bit more, maybe a war against Brazil and continue our colonial efforts into Africa. I might be attacking the Portuguese, but they're allied to the, to the Brits. So that's going to be an issue here. The Brits though, I love them. They're my ally, but at the same time, bro, I don't know how to say this. I kind of want you colonies, Britain. I kind of want you colonies. Friendship is amazing, but you know, rubber is even more amazing if you ask me uh excuse me portugal sided with gaza um <laughs> I'm taking all of your colony, all of your colony, all of your colony. Hey, hey. Zambezi. Let's see these guys. Yeah, I don't know which ones to take. I'm going to try and take all the colonies that they have. Looks like the Brits are not interested in uh, joining either side, nor are the French, which is really good because that means uh, I'm going to essentially just get all of these provinces for sure. Oh, looks like the Brits are actually might join me if I give them Transvaal. No, 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 no. I'm in the process of annexing all of these nations. I'm not going to give you a single inch of land, okay? Okay, it's about to go down, boys. It is about to go down. Uh, let's Gucci von Strombolucci and quickly wipe out the uh, Portuguese and the Gazans over here fighting side by side against me, apparently. What a bunch of wussies. Am I right, guys? How much infamy do I have now? 33. Surprisingly very little because obviously we didn't get the war goal against the Qing, so we didn't get that uh, infamy either as consequence. So we can use uh, our extra infamy points to just integrate all of our current African holdings and then also maybe take some more holdings from the Dutch maybe or even attack Benin, Oyo, all of these areas. Do these guys produce any uh, rubber? Let me check. All right, so potential Senegal produces. Okay, so it's not Sokoto. Sokoto doesn't have anything. Oh, no, Ashanti produces as well. Ghana, Togo, so we can attack these guys as well then. Hell yeah, we gonna be attacking everybody, boy. Everybody. Okay, so we enforced on Gaza. They're now fully annexed. They're a province of ours. Let's uh, incorporate them. I need, okay, I need a lot of government administration points, man. All right, tell you what, let's uh, build, I don't know how many. Let's build a lot of these. Let's build one in every one of these provinces. Screw it. I'm building a ton of government administration buildings. We need them, boys. We actually freaking need them. Looks like Portugal's got just 14 de brigades here defending their homeland. So they clearly are going to be losing this super fast, which begs the question, why? Why the hell would you even support the independence of one of my subjects when you're not ready to defend yourself against me? What the hell did you think was going to happen, Portugal? Like, actually, what the actual freaking snap did you think was going to happen here? Oh, it's Jover, boys. It is actually Jover. We got tractors. We got tractors in the house, everyone. We actually got Traktorenstein in. That means we're going to boost up our uh, engine cost. Plus, it frees up a lot of laborers. Look at that. 250,000 less laborers from switching to tractors for the rye farms. Another 4,000 less for the millet farms because we don't really have that many millet farms to be fair. There you go. This is going to increase our production massively. Mechanized slaughterhouses again massively boost us up because uh, it also increases our consumption of tools and coal and we had like 8,000 extra tools and coal that we were producing. Let me actually double check that. So yeah, look at that. We're producing 3.5 thousand and 2.8 thousand extra coal than we need. So changing to these production methods essentially ramps up 
our freaking need for these particular goods so we in essence become ridiculously rich by increasing the demand of those particular goods it does mean that we have a massive shortage of engines now so we need to build more uh engine manufacturers and automobiles we have a shortage of what i didn't even realize that okay and silk production we can ma make more silk plantations we can actually do that we have uh, a lot of silk we can do in uh, uh, the italian provinces dye it's almost there but yeah this is a good uh, refresher for me to see what i actually need to get more of we did have a naval success in uh in portugal so now we're basically just crushing them i wish we had the same situation in the previous Qing war because then we wouldn't have had any issues with our population whatsoever so i'm gonna try again to do the same thing i'm gonna be attacking somebody around here that's easy to attack and then try and get a land border with Qing so we can actually get land from them you know so we can actually do a land war with them better yet i might attack the persian actually yeah let's see what the population we got here 400,000, not much 300 1.2 million okay hold on a second hold on a second we could attack persia take a few provinces here and then we can border afghanistan which has the opium that we want to and we can make afghanistan our little puppet as well then so yeah let's uh do a couple of middle eastern wars afterwards we're gonna just follow in the footsteps of um you know those uh uh americanos of modern times right a lot of amazing wars in the middle east once more we got the alliance with uh, the english bestest of friends forever and we also got our colonies in uh south africa from the portuguese look at that the entire southeast african coastline is essentially ours now and we can just continue to annex our subjects here now okay so we're actually nearing a hundred million population now since we started integrating our subjects meaning we actually have one million pops that we can use in our industry which is amazing that's gonna make a massive difference for us right now so let's see what our infamy is at we are at 30 which is still pretty good i'm gonna go ahead and expand a little bit more whilst i'm at it let's see if we can annex zanzibar yes we can let's go with these bad boys next then that's how much population here in zanzibar it should be like 1 million 2 million more oh my god hails to the yes i'm also building up a lot more oil rigs because we're trying to switch to a uh, predominantly oil focused industry as well and yes i know i should have more construction sectors because right now i'm on very low taxation with almost no consumption taxes and i'm even paying extra for the government wages and i'm still making money you know what i might even cancel one of these um yeah i'll cancel that um consumption tax that should be fine now everybody's gonna be super happy with us that's for sure oh actually i just realized i don't have a skyscraper site uh surveyed so let's do that and let's also survey the panama canal after we've gotten this uh, the skyscraper survey done absolutely amazing news we got cultural exclusion now this does lower our authority a little bit unfortunately but it does mean that we can start uh integrating and assimilating to our culture more of the population in our country we're starting to get a lot of migrants from around the world now so for example we have ukrainians slovaks bedouins tongas gagabadabugs and so on and most of these we can actually integrate not all of them we do need to get multiculturalism for example to integrate swahilis and most of the african colonies that we have so that's going to be something that i'm going to be striving for up next to get uh to get multiculturalism we need somebody to support that right now pretty much nobody supports multiculturalism in fact most of our government is in opposition of it so it's going to take a while but once that's done africa shall be german of course as well right now we're basically just going to be converting all of the european holdings that we have to german since everybody essentially in europe is an accepted culture as it stands we've got the skyscrapers now i also want to say that my biggest gripe honestly is the fact that the revolution system or the uprises in victoria 3 are not really that amazing i wish it was a different system i was in the process of attacking somebody and i had to stop and i have to wait for the baluchistan uprising to finish and it's pointless i mean first off it's just a waste of my time because it's not like baluchistan with zero spawned units is going to be able to fight against me it's just a matter of me waiting for the war score to go down to minus 100 so i can integrate them again this should be so that once you have fully occupied the provinces of a revolution you don't have to wait to go to minus 100 you should be able to instantly annex them back into the fray that's my opinion at least otherwise it's just it really is just a waste of time as it stands right now revolutions in my opinion oh we got invest in hawaii hell yeah i'm doing that boys and i'm also going to survey the uh, suez isthmus we're going to try and get our hands on uh, the suez let's see what's going on in hawaii they seem to have a little bit of a revolution maybe we're going to be able to get a hold of hawaii if we uh, play our cards right right and then we can set up a massive pineapple plantation just kidding there's no pineapple in the game just yet so maybe we'll just do bananas then don't 
only good thing that came out of that secession is that now I have a technically a claim on Baluchistan. That's why I attacked Halat with the reconquest of core, basically with the return state uh, CB, which is only five infamy. So as such, we only have 39 infamy despite going into what is this 1.7 million GDP and 1 million population that we're going to be gathering over from Baluchistan. Best part though is that we get access to Afghanistan, which is very close to the Chinese afterwards. That's for sure. And these lands here are really easy to grab actually. I'm honestly surprised that the Russians did not puppet these. These are normally the first option for the Russians, at least when I'm playing as them, right? Oh, we got an achievement. Deeds, not words. And we also got women's suffrage. Cool. That means we got way more workforce ratio now, but it does lower our birth rate, which is fine. Let's see how many people we have that we can uh, work with. 300,000. Yeah, that is not amazing, but um, <laughs> better than nothing, I guess, end of the day, right? Wait, what? Italy? Italia just formed oh my boys i completely forgot to attack the italians before they unify uh, that's gonna bite me in the ass isn't it yeah maybe it's gonna bite me a little bit there i've been kind of ignoring europe to be fair so time to maybe pay a little bit of attention to the european continent as well we have been making massive progress into the asian and african bits though so there's that we're gonna do some nine hand moves here we're gonna give support uh, in the war against the canadians to the brits and in an exchange they're gonna give us the province of nagari thing is they already are supported basically by everybody else so i don't even need to help the brits i'm just getting the province of nagari for free essentially <laughs> Big brain right there, boys. Big brain, I'm telling you. Okay, so we're gonna ask nicely for the province of Suez from the Egyptians. If they don't give it, though, I'm I'm, I'm definitely gonna invade them and take the entirety of the province of Suez from them. I mean, not only that, I'm probably gonna take Hejaz as well in that war just to teach him a little bit of a lesson here, you know? You don't say no to the Germans, okay? You never say no to Germans. Now, because we have all that extra uh, bureaucracy, we can do the Panama survey and apply the same exact tactics to the Panama Canal. So, remember how I got the province of Nagari from the Brits. I didn't actually know where Nagari is. I thought that Nagari is somewhere in Africa. Apparently, Nagari is in freaking Tibet. I got no freaking clue what the hell is going on here. <laughs> But I've got a province that's not connected to the rest of my country. So I really need to go through the Sikh Empire now after I'm done with the Canadian War so I can grab the so I can fully integrate the province of Nagari of a Nagari into my country. <laughs> So ridiculous, man. I'm not complaining. I got free land, okay? And this is what I'm talking about. Ching is supporting uh, the uh, Sikh Empire, but we're kicking their butts left and right. Despite the fact that they outnumber us, we still have way better units than they ever will. So uh, we're going to use this as our border now, of course, and we'll be pushing into Ching right after the truce is over with them. I didn't add any war goals for this war so that I can capitulate the Ching fast after I've uh, puppeted uh, the Sikh Empire. And then once I lower the autonomy for the uh, Sikh Empire afterwards, I can just directly attack Ching and just make massive swathes of their lands, my directly owned provinces. Add them up to the lands we've got already in Tibet, I guess, right? Okay, so <laughs> this has to be the best thing I've ever seen in Victoria 3 so far. Sweden is literally offering to become our protectorate as long as we help them against their revolt. So clearly we're going to be doing that because that is an essentially a free protectorate on Sweden and we don't have to pay the infamy for that, right? Right? I don't think we... No, we don't need to. There you go. We're still at 52 notoriety, which is... Which essentially means that we did not pay anything infamy-wise to uh, make the Swedes our protectorate. How much is that? That's like 10 million GDP without having to even do anything for it. I love it. I actually love it. Let's see how the Swedes have. The Swedes also have 10 million GDP and 2.5 million population. And once we integrate the Swedish lands, we're going to be able to use all of that as well. We're going to redistribute a little bit of our population around the empire to you know use them in the right manufacturing plants because right now that's our biggest concern by far also love to see that the free states of america and the united states of america are still two separate entities 27 mil gdp and 33 mil gdp absolutely dog shit and the canadians have 26 as well so the canadians are basically same strength as the u.s is and the u.s managed to purchase alaska what that is surprising that is actually surprising 
Also, we can acquire land over in uh, Sinai. There you go. And in Panama because we increased our relations with the Egyptians and we increased our relations with the Granada. So now that we've acquired both of those, we can go ahead and build the Panama Canal and the Suez Canal. That's going to be very juicy. That's going to bring us a lot of prestige and flavor, of course. And going to make us ridiculously strong and going to allow us to control where the trade flows best. You know what I'm saying? All right. We do have massive electricity shortages around the country. So that is an issue, however. Let's try and uh, see how we're going to handle that. We're going to need to up the amount of electrical power plants that we have. And we're going to have to subsidize them. How am I not subsidizing them already? I should have been subsidizing all of these a while back. Okay. Let's get rid of the Swedish revolt. Yeah, bastards. You shouldn't be revolting against us. Oh, we got another revolt over here. Okay. Everybody decided to be revolting at the same freaking time, apparently. It's the age of revolution, I guess you could say, right? And would you look at that, lads? We've got level 5 for our education, level 5 for our law enforcement, home affairs, and we're working our way on the health system as well. So we're definitely making quite a little bit of progress here. Switzerland is about to also not exist anymore. So that's a double whammy, as I like to call it. Juicy double whammy for that matter. There you go. Annexatio complicatio. Let's go ahead and incorporate both of these states, make them integral parts of our society, shall we? Oh, snaps. We can also reduce the autonomy of the Swedes instantly right after the freaking uh, rebellion that they had. So look at that. <laughs> we got our map color everywhere now in uh, Central Europe, don't we? So we probably should reduce the autonomy of these bad boys as well here since we're at it. Kind of forgot to do this, didn't I? Since we've been improving relations with everybody, nobody wants to support our little vassals here's uh, play for becoming an independent nation so we're really abusing the shit out of that of course <laughs> clearly 1st of January 1900 we've integrated almost all of our colonies in Africa next up we're gonna be integrating the ones in uh, South America so that's basically I'm looking at you Argentina Chile and everybody here we're also in the process of acquiring some new puppets in the Hawaiian lands and afterwards I'm gonna lower the autonomy in the Sikh Empire and I'm gonna be attacking Ching for what I would like to say is gonna be half of it I'm gonna try and go for the low infamy provinces and snake my way towards the high infamy ones that actually have the population afterwards. Speaking of population, we're at 118 million, which is really not so bad overall. We got 51 million loyalists right now, and we also have the uh, highest standard of living in the world still. Oh, wow. Our puppet, uh, Hawaii, actually has the fourth most uh, in the world. That's insane. Okay. They are dealing with a little bit of a revolt right now, so we're helping them quelch that revolt. Revolt. That being said, we are in the process of building at least 10 electric plants in every single state that we have so we can switch to a full electrical grid. We've kind of, we should have done this 20, 30 years ago, but um, if I'm being honest, I've, I've, I've been re-watching House on my second monitor and um, I'm not the most efficient right now, but hey, what matters is I'm having fun, okay? So you be quiet right now. This is all about having fun when you play Victoria 3. It's not about being efficient. Whoever told you it's about being efficient doesn't know what they're talking about, clearly. Okay, we also finally got some type of colonization going. I, I should have gotten that a while back. Also, I actually thought that I did, but apparently I didn't. So, now we got colonization and we're gonna be colonizing as much as we can in Africa. Obviously, the Brits have a massive advantage, so we're kind of just going historical Germany right here in a way, right? But we will eventually be attacking the Brits to take their colonies from them once the alliance that we have with them is no longer in our benefit, I guess. Now, what started as a small border skirmish here in order to invade Afghanistan is turning into likely the first world war because the Russians are supporting Afghanistan and what I'm gonna do to punish the Russians is I'm gonna make them release half their country I'm releasing the Baltics as a United Baltic provinces I'm releasing Poland I'm releasing Ukraine I'm getting their vassal of Kokand for myself getting war reps and making Afghanistan a uh, protectorate so great job brush up you've absolutely screwed yourself right there actually freaking screwed yourself well I guess it's time to crush some uh, Ruskos Butskis, right, boys? Hail ya to tap for it, bro. <laughs> We do need more units, though. I haven't really been uh, recruiting many units because I didn't really need to because I've got a pretty strong army as it is, but we do need at least more artillery and uh, more line infantry. It's better yet, trench infantry, not line infantry. The Russians have line infantry, though, so... <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that, Russia. I'm actually kind of glad that they uh, helped out Afghanistan because I've got really high relations with the Russians, so if it wasn't for them joining on Afghanistan side, I, I would really struggle to uh, even be able to attack the Russians in the first place, right? Oh, we got election time. Okay, hopefully we get the right guys in charge of the
the country. So let's see how the war is going. We got 48 defense against their 41 defense. So it's pretty tight, actually. I need to get more artillery as consequence to uh, have an easier time crushing through their ranks then. I think I'm going to queue up a little bit more artillery fast. And let's see how this is going as well here. Pretty decent overall. Uh, once we've uh, finished off the uh, Af Afghans, we can use our units to push in from this flank in Russia and as such, relieve some of the pressure on the eastern front over in uh, Germany, of course. There you go. We are making progress. That is a pow show. I'm not even surprised though. I mean, it's it's like taking candy from a little kid, really. Look at this. Look at the look at the difference in units, man. We got trench infantry with shrapnel artillery. They have line, bro, with mobile cannons or whatever the hell they're called. I mean, it's not even funny, brother. You need to modernize your armies, Russia. That should be a priority for you, sir. How cute Russia is trying to save the Afghans. Aww. That's, uh, that's uh, very poetic right there. Russians in Afghanistan are losing no matter which side they're on, eh? <laughs> See what I did there? It's a, it's a reference to the failed Soviet invasion of, of Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I make I make these witty political remarks on my channel. Okay, you got a problem with that? Because if you do, leave it in the comment section to boost my algorithm. Yeah, hater. I love me some hater algorithm boosting, boss. Skibbity boo, skibbity bay. Afghanistan is ours. Hey. Okay, now we only have one front, the one in the east, and we're winning big time, boys. Which means we're gonna see Ukraine. We're gonna see the uh, Baltics and so on, Liberado, and then afterwards they're gonna be our little juicy protectorates, if you know what I'm saying. Yep, that's right. We're gonna go into the east. We're gonna make some living space for our people. Let's say, okay, shut up. Don't don't think about it too much. You know, I really feel like uh, just one of those uh, German generals sitting behind, enjoying the view as my armies are plummeting through the entirety of uh, Western Russia. Here, <laughs> I mean, we got 91 advantage over them, bro. They cannot even recruit new conscripts fast enough to hold off our onslaught it is ridiculous look at this look how how many look at this look at this just look at this man we killed 400,000 wounded 600,000 and we lost half of that all for the mere price of 8 million pounds which is nothing for our economy but it is 4 million for them and that is a lot for the russians basically one of the reasons why they're getting their freaking war score down super fast already at minus 40 and counting boys we're about to see Ukraine on the map and I think everybody's cheering for that aren't we I feel like my biggest issue now is the fact that I um, I need more construction sectors I should have upgraded the amount of construction sectors that I have like a while back I just I don't I don't know man it's 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 you know I'm taking it step by step there you go we got Ukraine we got the United Baltic provinces we got pool land and uh, we got war reparations from the Russians as well and they also transferred us Kokand. so we got most of the Middle East under our control as it is already how's our infamy doing we got 62. Okay, well, we can chill for a while. Maybe just lower autonomy here and there, and that's it. And just focus on uh, improving our economy. Let's get that 1 billion in the next 4 or 5 years, shall we? Time for yet another war against uh, Qing. This time, we're taking a massive amount of land, but that's pretty much it. We're taking the uh, western part, because we've reached our limit here. We are now at uh, 92 notoriety or infamy, so we gotta chill after this. We're also fighting the Ottomans, but we're not taking anything from them, so... Uh, um, wait, what? Oh, come on. I don't want 14 infant. That's so dumb. Fine, I'll get the minus 10 prestige, you scumbags. Yeah, we're uh, just gonna hold out against the Ottomans on this front because the Ottomans are supporting Qing. So eventually, hopefully, we uh, get them to bugger off. And we're, of course, pushing into the Qing lands. We have 38 advantage despite having significantly less units in them. Once we have all of our units reach the front line, it's gonna be even more than 63 advantage. That is for sure. Look at that. Wait a second. Did I just see a political party form? Uh, what the hell is this political party? The what party now? I'm sorry. Trade unions. What the hell are you doing with your lives? What is this political party and why are you guys in charge of my country? I'm not sure I'm happy with that, okay? I feel like this might end up being a problem for us. <laughs> We're gonna just, uh, redo this. Yeah, well, let's get rid of those uh, trade unions for the time being, shall we? And I have a few questions. First off, what the hell is this? Why does Mexico have East Africa? This was a British colony. How did a British colony 
colony governed by Bartholomew Gordon Lennox become a freaking Mexican colony. Mexico also is uh, an ally of the Brits, so defensive pact. I'm assuming that they bartered that state, so they gave the colony to the Mexicans in exchange for something. That's what I'm assuming here. Otherwise, I don't see how else this would happen, but I would like to take this from them, that being said. Okay, we're making pretty decent progress in the Qing front here. We're advancing ridiculously fast for that matter. Guess it's not the First World War, is it? I thought the one with the Russians was, but that wasn't also, it was pretty easy. I don't know what the First World War is going to be. Maybe against the Brits or something? And you know what I would like to see? I would like to see the ability to change in specific area stuff. So, for example, my German area, essentially, I've fully electrified, right? So, in the German area, but only the super German area of Europe, I would like to change to electric production methods. But in the rest of the empire, like in Africa, South America, Asia, I would like to keep it as it is because I don't have the electrical capacities in those areas just yet, right? Now, I know that that would be extremely hard to script, but I'm just saying that would be an awesome thing if it was at any point in time uh, a feature for Victoria 3, if you ask. Sacre bleu, mass conscription. We can have 2,300 battalions from uh, mobilization. That is insane, man. What? The it's about time, though. It's We reached the point of the campaign where mobilizing the entire nation is actually a viable tactic. You know, China is significantly bigger than I expected it to be. It's not hard uh, winning the war, but it's just taking its freaking long-ass time because they got so many troops that I have to fight and grind through. It's insane. Sacre bleu. We have the Chinese lands. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at the border gore. Absolutely delicious border gore right there. <laughs> okay, so the next war we can take Qing and everything else that we want to take from them, obviously. And look at our population just skyrocket. We went up to 131 mil. That's like a good 10 mil or something that we got from these lands. For those of you wondering, why am I decreasing relations with the nations I released from the Russians? It's obviously because I want to attack them and bring them into the fold. In order to do that, I need to have bad relations with them, obviously. What the actual fuck is this, man? I just saw. I've got 109 art academies in Nagari, and I'm building another three. Obviously, all of this is because of the private investment pool. This goes to show why I'm not normally playing with the private investment pool. It's so dumb, bro. Like, it's actually so freaking dumb. It makes no sense for this province here to have 109 prop and 109 uh, art academies, and then the private investment pool is building another three. Like, are you stupid, brother? There's not enough population to muster all of these freaking art academies. Why are you building more? It's literally pointless to have the private investment pool. From now on, I'm only going to keep uh, direct uh, management of the investment pool. I'm, I'm sorry. This is just dumb. Not only this, but other areas, other states in Germany and so on. Same situation. It's retarded, bro. Like, they need to fix this shit. I hope 1.6 fixes this because this is unplayable to use that shit. And if I see you scumbags in the comment section going, Ah, oh, bloody, uh, using uh, direct management for investment pool is like cheating. No, it's not, bro. What the actual F, my man? It's achievements even friendly for fuck's sake and it's encouraged by paradox until they fix this shit even so if you want to be special and you want to play with the stupid ass private investment pool building all the dumb shit like here that's your problem there are benefits to it obviously like in this run especially in the early part of the campaign it did help a little bit building some stuff that i wouldn't be able to build because of the uh type of uh economic system but it's not worth it it's until they fix this it's not freaking worth it man i had 1 billion then i dropped from 1 billion to 940 million again because of some dumb shit that was happening and because of the investment pool building stupid things and destroying my companies and so on it's just unbelievable like look at this here silesia bro this this is retard beyond retarded they're building a paper mill in this province and they're gonna keep it as one paper mill when i don't have the population i'm struggling to get the population to build to attract them towards the factories that i need them to go to and they're building a stupid ass freaking paper mill like what what is going on here man like if i didn't have the private investment pool i would have likely 60 million million GDP in this province instead of 35. That's the difference it would make, man. It's insane to me. And also, 35 mil there is actually more than the United States have. So, Silesia as a state is stronger than the entirety of the US in my run. So... Just let that uh, sink in for a second. Hey, look at that. Canodians just got their independence. Hell yeah, my broskies. Hell yeah. Congratulations. Yo, English mass migration. A number of English people have begun migrating from the Great Britain to Delvidek. Oh my God. English people love our country more than they love England. That goes to show. Germany has become the greatest of the greatest, clearly, right? I do hope you guys had as much fun watching this run as I had playing it. And if you did, let me know in the comment section 
if you really want me to do uh, a new Super Germany as Prussia in 1.6 and I have a few ideas to make this run a lot more efficient in 1.6 including forming Super Germany significantly faster. And hey, if you enjoy this type of video, you're gonna love my Japan up next. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support.